Hi, welcome to Expressions. I'm Julie Robbins. We're at the home of the award-winning sugar artist Carrie Vincent. Carrie's work is known internationally, including being recognized by the Queen of England. Her decorating talent turns an ordinary cake into what seems to be an untouchable masterpiece. But believe it or not, it's quite touchable. In fact, it's even edible. When we return, Carrie will show us her technique of sugar craft. for this tasty expressions. Today is Carrie Vincent. Carrie, you are a sugar artist. Indeed. And you have made all of these beautiful things on the table. Before we start discussing them, let's talk a little bit about you. Now, as our listeners and viewers will, will notice, you have an accent. You're from Australia. Yes, I'm afraid. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> and you have an interesting story how you actually got involved in uh, sugar artists mm -hmm. as a sugar artist. I started uh, here uh, about 12 years ago in Oklahoma, strangely enough, although. I didn't intend to get into it in the beginning, but some friends prevailed upon me to make a cake, <laughs> and that was the biggest mistake because I had a food background. I've been to the uh, Cordon Bleu, Bleu School in London, mm. and uh, when I finished with there, I went to seven different countries to live, and so I tried to stay in the food business on the way. Every place I went to, I took classes from somebody, but nothing much in sugar craft. Anyway, to make a long story short, when this little girl asked me to do her cake, um, I decided that I would try. and. I went and uh, to the local candy store and got some implements but then when I finished it I realized that um, I guess it kind of got to me and I started thinking about it and when I went home to Australia for the first time I after this wedding I grabbed up books because I wanted to do my own homegrown traditional decorating and so the work you're going to see here today is not typically American it's a kind of a crossover actually and uh, I'm isolated from my homeland, so I'm doing different things to what they are, but the medium is still the same. And you not only do things locally, you hold some international titles, mm -hmm. don't you? Yes, I have a gold medal from the UK and from Australia, and I also um, have demonstrated overseas and here nationally in all sorts of different places. I have lots of um, best of shows and whatnot from here and surrounding states, wherever I've traveled basically to compete, I've come out pretty clean. Now let's go ahead and talk about some of your work here because sure. this is beautiful. And we do want to mention that everything we're looking at is edible. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Oh, it's just, it's just gorgeous. Well, this one here is continuous rolls um, in, uh, on a Valentine's cake. It just came out this month in the magazine and every one of them is alternate colors and it looks it's like all in fabric. One piece. It's meant to. Oh. And then these are lace impressed uh, pieces with little bitty um, South African flowers that I've used on here. And you have another Valentine's That was last actually. year's Valentine's cake and that was a mosaic uh, design that I invented and I think that it came out very nicely. I think that the cupids in the front um, are, are rather sweet and unfortunately a little bit was damaged here at a cake show that I had with somebody flicked up the edges but as you can see in the magazine it was perfect at one time. <laughs> Um, this one here, uh, I decided to do something a little different because there's a lot of people getting married for a second time and they don't always want the traditional first time wedding cake. Now are these three, con they're considered cakes then? Mm. Okay. I decided I didn't want them stacked or on um, stands because I thought it would be an interesting way to present them. And they, I got the idea from an onion, peeling back the onions by doing that outside piece and I thought it would be kind of interesting. And there are little hydrangeas around the edge. Instead of putting them in big bunches, I decided that it would be nice to have them individual pieces stripped out. You have such a talent of making everything look so real. Oh. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that. That's the goal. In Australian decorating, 
We are not interested in facsimiles. We're interested in everything being exactly as nature. And I don't go, some people get silk flowers to copy, but I don't do that. I grow my own roses and I pull them apart. Go from the real thing, mm -hmm. don't you? Collect all the leaves before, like now when there's none, and I, I either freeze them and have them in little packets of water <laughs> so I can look at them later. Well, it keeps the colour good, you see. And some of them I press and, and I can watch, you know, the patterns and all that sort of stuff from there. Oh, how beautiful. Well, that's my faux fabulous, fabulous faux Fabergé collection. <laughs> and um, I decided that I wanted to do something a little bit more interesting than just the standard Easter egg that you see at the store. There's at least a day and a half to, a, to two days in each egg. Um, I went very slowly because eggs are fragile. The chocolate you can stick your finger through. And uh, one of the eggs has roses on the top mm -hmm. and some other detail that we're mm -hmm. going to actually be I'm doing I'm going to show now. you this morning about how we're going to do those because uh, they're a simple one to start out with and I think that people will pick those up very quickly. Well, the large cake in the back um, is something that I've concocted that um, it was just one best of show in Oklahoma just now. And instead of being traditional white, it's ivory. Um, all of the rose work on the side is inscribed. It's not molded. And I invented the pleat, which is around the base. And it just looks like fabric, as you can probably oh, yes, see. It does. And it was named for me. It's gorgeous. And then all of the flowers I make by my own um, hand for show work, I do not use cutters. I use cutters for demos because that's the easiest way for people to understand at the beginning. But I make all of mine um, from real roses from the garden. I pull the flowers apart. I make patterns of all the petals and then put Humpty back together again. <laughs> <laughs> and then, this uh, cake is very delicate, isn't it? So even the ribbon is made from sugar. Um, mm. It's quite delicate and you almost could breathe on it and break it. And then all the swags and draping here is all sugar. And a lot of people are quite stunned when they realize that. And the roses, uh, of course, are the same Once as the others. Mm -hmm. Tell me about this. this cake I was commissioned special. to make this, for, uh, this design for the Queen um, when she had a golden wedding anniversary. And it has uh, Phalaenopsis, the uh, frangipani, um, the protea, all of these flowers have some reference to the Commonwealth and since it was a big Commonwealth occasion I decided that I needed to bring something different in even though she is the English Rose I felt that she is also the Queen of the Commonwealth and I'm not an American citizen um, I'm still Australian and I'm still a Commonwealth <laughs> person and so I do like my Queen and I had these little crowns that I made uh, to represent um, her, her royalness. And, um, and then after the fact, I was ever so excited because um, I sent a picture so that she would have something to keep. And then at the end of the day, um, I had a letter back from but her lady Yes, oh. I, was, I was informed by an English colleague that there, there's very few people running around with a letter like that. So I was quite pleased. Quite pleased, oh, I was yes. overcome when I saw it in the letterbox. Uh, I nearly I, dropped my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I can see why. Now we're going to start making an egg, right? What's yes. the first step? Is it? Well, the first thing we need to do before we get to do an egg is to make the egg. So we'll pop over to the stove, shall we, and have at it. Let's do it. Okay, Carrie, we got the chocolate about melted. We're gonna bring it over here. Right. Okay, and we're using a double boiler, is that what that is, to yes. melt it? Okay. And the reason that uh, I, I'm using a reasonably um, uh, accessible chocolate for most people price-wise, because there's some very expensive, like Velma, uh, Velrona and Calibo, that are about 15, 20, 30 dollars a pound. This is chocolate that you get at the candy store. Now, you bring it up the sides and it's going to pull down in the, in the base there. I'm going to pop it in the, free, uh, in the fridge just for a few minutes. We'll just wait a second because we have to brush it up again when it sets a little bit. While we're waiting for that, I just wanted to show you something that happens that if you don't brush it up the sides, you'll get a weak side here which is really bad when you try to put them together. Mm, wow. um, I'll show you. 
technically how you join them together. If you have this fry pan, even though these two are bad matches, and you can see how this is breaking in my hand mm -hmm. now, you just melt it like this and melt it like that, and that was way oh. too hot, and put them together like so. Then you can run around them and trim them. Now I want to take this other one out now and just show you what I mean about pulling up the sides. Now it's going to stay. Okay, it's just kind of thickened yeah. more. The coal, it's just cooling it off much faster than if we were just leaving it out. And the other reason for having it in the fridge is because um, it will come out glossy. If we just did it at room temperature, I haven't got quite enough in there, um, it would come out dull. Mm. So we'll leave that there and then we'll move on to the next thing that we're going to do. So I don't like the commercial colours that are available so I decided that I wanted to make my own. So I took the normal white um, pastilles that you get which are actually not white at all, they're quite creamy when you compare it uh, from one to the, to the other. But I just take one per... Check one of the blue yeah, ones? Per, per, that's not good, it won't separate but um, for some reason they've stuck together. But uh, one of those, uh, one pound, and I need four of those to get that colour. Okay. Now, I have this paste, if I can get it out of here. It almost looks like Play-Doh. Yes, it is actually, big girls Play-Doh. <laughs> what is it's that? It's a combination of sugar paste and a little white chocolate melted and kneaded right in. And we roll it out. And then we're going to take the cutter and cut out some little tiny flowers to go around the edge of the egg. Oh, okay. Take them off. Very carefully, right? Mm -hmm. And then we put them on the petal pad, which is this one here where I've got lots of ones already made. Is that foam? Yes. Then we take a ball tool and ball the edges of the petals so that they're very thin like flowers are in real life. Mm. Each one. Make sure you hit every petal. Okay. Then, kind of like being a doctor, really, here. <laughs> you took the throat tool, which gives the throat each of the flowers. Okay. Now, I'll move on to making a mould, which is one that I got down at the Tulsa Flea Market. And in order that this doesn't stick, we have a little cornstarch here, and we just dust the mould. And there's a wet side and a dry side to the paste. Do not put the wet side down. You must have the dry side. Okay. And then we press it in, a little tiny piece of foam so it doesn't stick to our fingers, or we can put a little cornstarch on there. Now, why did you use cornstarch instead of flour? Because cornstarch is cleaner, um, mm -hmm. finer, and it's also um, it doesn't distort the colour of your paste because oh. regular flour is quite a lot yellower. And once it's in there and you push it right in so that you get all the little reliefy bits, then you pop it out very carefully. And Ave Weller we have, have her. I can give her some petal paste, uh, petal dust, and Ooh, makes her really pretty. Pretty. Mm -hmm. And it's called petal dust. Petal dust. Okay. Now I want to make some leaves, so I had to roll the paste again. Oh, now that's an unusual. This pen comes from Rosa. Ortega in Peru. She especially vent it, every one of them is hand tooled like this. It's uh, mm. so there's little sharp edges and it makes a fabric effect in sugar. And so I'm going to cut some leaves out with the cutters. Now the the leaves to give them a sense of form, just pinch the ends and twist them just a little bit. Okay. I'm going to cut this in half. And this is going to be one of the little fabric effect roses. Okay. Then we're going to fold it in half, but we don't press the, the join down or the, the roll down. And then we roll it up loosely, like you're sort of gathering. Hmm. And that twist it over and then pinch it off hard at the back. And it gives it just like it would have been made from material if you would make it on a ball gown or something. And we have some already made yeah. there as well. Okay, so the next thing, I think we've got leaves, little flowers and roses done. So now we need a bow. And we have a little, the 
egg color now, right? Right. Okay. Now I'm going to roll it and texture it. Okay. I love this pen. Oh, I do too. And then I'm going to take some petal dust. This is called silk. And I'm going to cut some ribbon pieces. And that's just like an exacto knife that you yeah. use, isn't it? Okay. Very simple. Just like if you would be doing um, a bow. Okay, so we need tails. We take those and we press little gathers in. Now why do we do that? Just to give the, see how they're going to make now? Hmm. There's the beginnings oh, of your, of your okay. tails. Now I need the, 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 the loops, the rabbit ears as I like to call them. You can have, make a pattern for, for yourself if you want to. I usually just eyeball it and see how long and I need to put a bit more petal dust because it's got to match there. And it is nice if you've got an awful lot of time to, to play. And I think that looks a bit long so I'm going to shorten it. And pinch the centre. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now you've got your bow. I'm going to cut off the excess and put that right over there, there by your bow. Okay. And then we want this oh, to okay. sit in the centre. Okay. So we're going to bring the egg over and we've made all these little flowers. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do is we have to attach them with chocolate. And the reason for why is when you're doing chocolate work, you have to attach chocolate with chocolate. Water will not attach to, to an oily base thing. So we're going to start by popping these little flowers on. And you have to hold them a second or two. Okay. They don't just jump on there immediately. Isn't that so? gorgeous? What do you think? Oh, I love it. So okay. what's our next step? So now we're going to put the bow on. First the tails that we had formed over here. Mm -hmm. And everything okay. is still wet? Oh, absolutely. Okay. We need it wet so that we can shape it how we want it. Oh, on the egg, sort of yeah. form on there? Okay. So if we want a little bit hanging down, and because it, it hangs on, because this is the wet side of the paste, remember? Okay. Now we take the rabbit ears, pop those on there, like that to place them yeah. there. Just going to decorate it a little bit, huh? Yeah. Okay, now we need the cameo. Just a little bit on the back. Doesn't take much, does it? No. Yeah, this is a drying time. Chocolate's a bit reluctant to dry quickly. Okay, place that there. Do you ever stick this in the refrigerator like you did the no. shell? No. Because the, the sugar paste in there will break down. Oh yeah, it's yes. looking pretty. And so there, it wasn't such a big problem to make your fabulous faux <laughs> Fabergé egg, was it? No. Oh, I love that. What do you think? Gorgeous. Think we need another leaf? What about in there? I might shove another one in there. Okay. 
there. And see with that little twisty thing that I told you to, you know, when you pinch the back of the leaf, mm -hmm. how much nicer they look than when they're flat. Ooh. There we go. Oops. There we go. Mm-hmm. Now, like for those that might want to do a swag around an egg, I'm going to show you how to make it. And the swag looks like, to me, it would be very difficult, isn't They're it? They're not really. Um, you just need to be careful that you must measure the entire area of the egg around the join mm -hmm. and then divide it in how many swags you want to make. So if you want six swags, then whatever the measurement is, divided by six. So I'll take this piece of paste. And it's really quite simple. Roll it out. We need to get it pretty thin. It what I normally do is make a little pattern so each one of them is exactly the same. And I'll just cut this out just to show technique. Okay. So you're basically getting a rectangle. There we go. Make sure you keep your paste rolled up and in the plastic wrap, otherwise it dries out and you can't use it. Do you keep your paste normally at room temperature when you're not using it? Mm -hmm. Just leave it out? Yeah, okay. it doesn't need to be in the fridge. And you need two pieces of uh, satay stick or uh, what do you call those things here? Um, I call it a satay stick. stick. Um, <laughs> skewers from the barbecue. Just put a little cornstarch on the back to avoid it sticking together. Run the satay stick through the first time. Makes your first roll. Oops. Oh, okay, it just kind of tucks under. Mm -hmm. You need the second one. Oh, you just lay it beside the other? Okay. And then you need another one. I'm going to cooperate. Hmm. Yep. Take them out and then pinch them together. Tidy it up so you've got it exactly right. You bring your egg, make sure that you have some chocolate on the edge. Just enough to hold the weight because right. this is not like a small flower. You place it around, okay. Ooh, I like that. And then you'd have another one that would go on there. And in order to cover up the join each time, then you can take another little flower, just like we did before on the edge. Oh, and put right in between. And cut, cut them right between. Mm -hmm. Kind of nice, isn't it? Yes, it is. Well, Carrie, we've shown people at home things that they can do themselves, but uh, one of the things I guess maybe you're famous for are the roses and flowers that you do. Mm -hmm. Can you show us that? Because I know it's a little bit uh, more of an advanced technique, isn't it? It is, and the other thing is with them, they take so long, the big ones, but I'll show you what we use, is, which we call a quick rose. You may roll your paste in a ball, and then you pull out a little flag, and then you wrap it right round, so that gives you your first like a bud. bud, okay. And that ideally should dry overnight. Cut out here. Now the ones that you saw on the wedding cake are all made, as I said before, by, from real rose petals that I've cut out patterns of every single one. And then we take this tool and we thin the edges and lift them. So it's a little bit different tool than you were using while ago for the smaller see, flowers. See how it brings them up though? Yeah, it sure does. And we need maybe two or three. It just depends with small ones um, how much you can fit in because there's just a small amount of space to work in. And it's not as easy as when you're working with a bigger rose because you've got more area to cover. Right. You have to put a cut like a Y in there. Oh. And you take out that. And no this way. one here has to wrap around the bud. And so we're going to dampen it. And the water is kind of like glue then, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you really should do the buds the day before because they push out of shape 
if you're doing them immediately. So now you've got the first two on. Mm. Okay. So you go from two down to three and they wrap on alternately. So where the join there is fits in the middle of that one. Okay. And you pop that around there. Everybody gets quiet at this time. Yeah. Okay, and then you, really you take the next way. one, and it's a bit long, so punch a bit off. And this is where you get into trouble if you work with a wet bud, because when I push it hard, it's going to push out of shape. But each one fits inside the other. I normally would pull the petals out with the brush, mm -hmm. but this one is not going to work as well as it should because I can't push it hard enough at the base. Mm -hmm. But at least I can give you a good idea how it works. And then this one here is oh. how it should finish. You see it, it bears a resemblance, but it's not as fine as it ought to be because I can't thump down on it. Right. And if it was a hard bud in the middle, I could press really, really hard against it. And that way you can see how, how delicate they can look. Well, it still looks beautiful, Gary. Well, thank you. <laughs> you did a wonderful job. Well, I appreciate it. Well, thank you so much for being on the program thank today. You. We've really enjoyed it. And I hope you've enjoyed uh, the making of a truly incredible edible egg. Thank you for watching Expressions. We'll see you next week. A truly incredible edible egg. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll call my next, next year's Easter project. <laughs> my truly incredible egg. <laughs>